Hey dolls and welcome back to my channel. So the importance of sunscreen is very much highlighted especially now in the beauty scene. And I've never been so invested on sunscreen, especially when I saw these photos showing how the sun can really be damaging to your skin. This photo focused on two twins with a significant difference in the amount of sun exposure they received over their lifetime. The twin on the right had about 10 more hours per week of sun exposure than the twin on the left. And the perceived age difference between the two of them is 11 years when in fact they are twins and they have the same age. This really shows how sun protection is very important to prevent rapid aging and sun damage. Dermatologists recommend applying sunscreen on a daily basis, even on a cloudy or overcast days. UV radiation can penetrate clouds and reach the skin, so it's very important to protect yourself consistently. So how often should you reapply your sunscreen? It is suggested that you reapply your sunscreen every two hours or more frequently if you're sweating heavily or you're swimming. Even water resistant sunscreen, they wear off over time, so reapplication is very crucial to maintain that protection. But here's the dilemma, especially for us ladies how do we reapply sunscreen if we already have a full face of makeup? How do we do it, especially every two hours? without our makeup melting or peeling. So I've tested several types of a sunscreen formulation for you guys so we can see which one is best to use over makeup. And I also use a UV camera to see how effective each one is. If you're new to UV camera, this is how it works. So sunscreen can appear black or dark on a UV camera because many sunscreens contain ingredients that absorb or block ultraviolet radiation. So UV cameras are designed to detect UV light which is invisible to the naked eye. When UV light interacts with certain sunscreen ingredients, it can cause the sunscreen to absorb or scatter the UV radiation making it appear dark or black on a UV camera image. But it is important to note that the darkness of sunscreen on a UV camera image does not necessarily indicate its effectiveness. So sunscreen should be chosen based on its stated sun protection factor or SPF and broad spectrum protection against UVA and UVB rays. I'm merely using this UV camera to test how this different types of formulation of sunscreen applies on my face and to see the coverage of the sunscreen on my face because without the UV camera, sometimes I would apply sunscreen and I didn't know that usually I'm missing my chin or I'm missing under my eyes or over my eyes. So I'm using this UV camera just to see how the sunscreen applies. So before I test all of these products, I just want to share one very, very important sunscreen application rule. You have to apply your sunscreen, whether it be mineral or chemical, on dry skin. First of all, if you put mineral sunscreen on wet skin, it will not go on. And with chemical sunscreen, it goes on top layer of your epidermis to absorb ultraviolet rays so it doesn't go on your skin and it prevents skin damage. So if you're going to apply it on wet skin, then it will truly affect the absorption of the chemical sunscreen on your skin. I always see a lot of people applying sunscreen freshly out of the pool when their skin is still wet and I used to do that too. And then I'm surprised that a sunburn happened on my skin. And that's because the sunscreen is not fully absorbed on my skin, especially when I'm applying it on wet skin. So just always make sure that you apply your sunscreen, whether it be on your face or on your body, on dry skin. And if you're using a moisturizer, make sure that your moisturizer is fully absorbed onto your skin. So maybe wait for like 15 minutes before applying your sunscreen over your moisturizer, just to make sure that your moisturizer and your sunscreen doesn't mix and 
and it doesn't affect the efficacy of your sunscreen. So now let's go on to testing this different sunscreen formulation on top of makeup. So, so the first sunscreen that I'm going to show you is a cream sunscreen. The one that I'm loving right now is the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice Plus Probiotics SPF 50 Plus PA++++. This is also the formula I love to wear under makeup. It is very nourishing, it has no white cast, and it's not sticky. I never thought I could wear this over makeup though. I'm like, how would I? Like, if I apply it on top of my makeup and I rub it on my makeup, I'm pretty sure that my makeup's gonna melt. Until I research how other girls use it and it's genius. I learned that the best way to use this over makeup is using an air cushion puff. So I'm using a cushion sponge from my cushion foundation, but, but you can also get this cushion puff from Amazon. It's called an air cushion puff. It does not absorb product, but it applies the sunscreen well on the face. You can see that it did not disturb my makeup so much. But since I have powder on, it made my powder settle on my pores a little bit. Looking at the UV camera, this type of application gave me a good sunscreen coverage. And because of the consistency of the cream, I'm barely missing a few areas with sunscreen. I just missed the side of my nose, so I made sure to fold my puff and really pat the sunscreen on that side and also under my eye. The second sunscreen formulation that I tested is a matte sunscreen stick. This form of sunscreen is so on trend because it's easy to carry around. You can use it on your body, you can use it on your face, and it's just very portable. Of all the sunscreen formula, I really love this matte sunscreen stick because I have oily combination skin and I get really oily. So I love how this formula really mattifies my face. One thing to note when using a sunscreen stick is to warm it on the back of your hand first so it melts a little bit and it's easier to apply onto your skin. You can see that the makeup can transfer on the stick but it's so easy to apply this over and under makeup. And you can see under the UV camera, it really spreads well. Up close, you can see that it did move my makeup a bit, but I can just spread it back to fix it. So I think this sunscreen stick is perfect if you're going to use this over light makeup. The third sunscreen formula that I'll be showing is a face mist sunscreen. This is the Sun Bomb SPF 45 sunscreen face mist. I love this because it doesn't have a typical chemical smell that you get from the usual sunscreen mist. It actually smells like bananas. It also sprays really well on the skin and on the UV camera, you can see that it really covered my face well. The only part that I usually miss when I'm using a face mist sunscreen is my chin because when you spray, like it usually goes on the top of your face and on the side. So make sure that if you're using a sunscreen face mist, make sure that you also spray upwards so that this part also gets covered. It also did not bother my makeup. Even if I oversprayed in this video, I really think I oversprayed in this video. I think that you can just go with one spray across in front and then above and that's it but i really love this face mist so i went overboard with it the only thing with this face mist on your first reapplication you're still gonna be fine but on your second third fourth it can really make you look very oily and especially if you have oily combination skin type as me make sure you have a pressed powder handy to mattify your face. And speaking of powder, the fourth formulation is a powder SPF. The one that I'm using is the Super Goop Mineral Resetting Powder with SPF 45. I love how this looks over makeup because it's already a powder, so my makeup will not get disturbed by it. Plus, it also mattifies my face at the same time. But if you look closely on the UV camera, 
I can't really tell where it goes. Remember when I said that this UV camera does not really tell you how effective your SPF is, it just tells you where it is being applied. And although minimally I can see where my SPF goes, like I really have to put a lot for it to show. So I think with powder sunscreen, even with adequate quantities, it can't really give you the level of sun protection that your skin really needs. You can use this as a touch-up or additive product, but I won't rely on it. I think that I'm going to use this when I look too oily using my face mist or my cream sunscreen to mattify my face, but I'm not going to use this solely to protect my face from the sun. So now that I've shown you four formulations of sunscreen on top of makeup, I think that I love each one for a specific occasion. I still prefer using cream sunscreen under makeup to moisturize my face. For every day when I'm just wearing a light makeup, I will then use my stick sunscreen. And on days when I have heavy makeup on, I would use my sunscreen face mist together with my sunscreen powder to mattify my face. Okay dolls, I hope that you find this video helpful. I hope that you don't forget to apply your sunscreen on a daily basis, no matter what the weather is and whether you're indoor or outdoor. And also don't forget to like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll always be updated once a new video is out. Thank you so, so much dolls again for watching and I'll see you on my next one.